What we're going to be going over here are bonds issued with stock warrants and we're going to be looking at detachable versus non-detachable warrants and we're going to be comparing the warrant recognition here between the detachable and the non-detachable warrants when they're sold with bonds here. So for example here, Corporation A issued 4,000 bonds here, $1,000 each here, par value, and, and the bonds here were issued at 101 or 101% of par and each bond was sold uh, or issued here with one detachable stock warrant. One detachable warrant here per bond. Now point one here, after issuing the bonds, the bonds were selling at 98% of par without the warrant. That's where the bonds were selling separately here. And the warrant had a market value of $40 each here. So each of these are determined, uh, separated. Uh, bond sells at 98% of par after it, uh, when the warrant separated and the warrant here is um, has a market value of $40 each and in this case here the bonds and the warrants each could be sold separately as we mentioned here and two we're going to be using the proportional method here to issue the bond with the warrant here and three we're going to compare the detachable warrants here to non-detachable warrants so first off for our detachable warrant that and that can be sold separately from the security and it can be traded separate as a separate security. A non-detachable warrant stays with the security. In this case, it's the bond we're looking at. And by purchasing a bond with the warrant or the warrant sold separately here, the buyer receives the right to buy some stock equity in the company at a fixed price in the future. Okay, so let's go up here and let's we're going to be looking starting with this detachable warrant we're going to be comparing really the uh, non-detachable warrant with the detachable warrant here when we issue these bonds here but uh, we're going to start with this detachable warrant we're in, this is where you have to use the proportional method here so this is the case here using this proportional method you know the fair value of all the securities they are known here and you're going to allocate the proceeds received on the sale here proportionately between the securities so what do we know in this case? Well, we're dealing with the bond here and the warrant, and, and we're going to be uh, looking at the allocation here starting with a fair value of one unit. That is the bond and the a warrant here sold separately. So the bond and a warrant here sold separately. This is the bonds without the warrants that we're going to be looking at here. So this is the case here. A bond sells at 98% here, $1,000 face value or par value per bond. That gives us an allocation here of $980 per bond is what we would receive if it was sold separately here. And then we know the warrant. Well, that's $40 each here, uh, market price on the warrant. So our total fair value of one unit is $1,000. $20 here. 980 plus 40. So now we can allocate to our bond here um, uh, $980 here divided by the total fair value one unit of 1020. That is 96.1% here is allocated to the bond and to the warrant. Well, it's simply 40 here divided by the total fair value of 1020 here. That 3.9% goes to our warrant here. So a portional method here we've allocated. Uh, to our bond here and to our warrant, total of 100%. So next we have to allocate the uh, allocation here of the receipts between the bond and the warrant. So our total sale receipt here, well, we had 4,000 bonds with warrants here, $1,000 par value on the bond, and they were issued here at 101% here. So total receipts would be $4,040,000. Now we allocate to the bond here based on those receipts here. Well, that's our fractional amount here, 980 divided by 1,020 here, that fractional amount that we calculated up above here, uh, times the total sales receipt here, $4,040,000. So allocated to the bond, $3,882,000. Now, allocating to our warrant here, we use the fractional amount that we calculated up here, uh, 40 divided by 1020 here, times the total receipts here, $4,040,000. And that would give us 158000 here allocated to the warrant. This is using that proportional method here where we used, we knew the value here of the bond sold separately and our warrant sold separately. So we allocated our receipts here based on that here. So looking at our total bond was allocated at a discount here. So that, well, let's look at that. So our allocation of our bond here was $3,882,000. Now the bond's face value here, well, we had 4,000 units at $1,000 each par value for $4 million. So you can see here, based on our allocation here, we have re would have received less for our bond here than the face value of the bond here. And the difference being $118,000. So this is where the bond here would have been 
be been at a discount with the detached warrant here. Okay, so now let's go and look at how we'd record this here. So we're, this is the case where we're going to have these 4,000 bonds issued at 101% with one warrant per bond here. And we're going to be looking at the case here where the warrant is detached from the bond and then also where it's uh, undetached from the bond. So let's look at what we're going to have here. So what stays constant in this example here is the bond with the warrant, what what we re received here on um, cash. So it was sold with the warrant here. So the bond sold with the warrant. We have 4,000 units here and they were sold, or 4,000, yeah, 4,000 units here at 101% a par, uh, par value, or they were sold at $1,000 per unit here, par value. So that would be $1,010 here. So uh, multiplying that out, you're going to get your cash received here, the receipts of $4,040,000. Okay, okay, so we've got that, we calculate that above. So credit or debit, increase your cash by that amount. Now the other thing that stays constant here is this bond, it's face value. They were issued at $1,000 each year, 4,000 units. So where I'm saying there's a $1,000 par value on the bonds. So we credit that here, 4,000 times 1,000 for $4 million. So that uh, stays constant here, what our bond face value is or our bonds payable here and the cash we received here. And that's going to, those stay constants for both the detachable and the non-detachable warrants. Now let's look at, we'll start with the detachable warrant here. So this is where we had that we talked about that bond discount that based on our allocation here so we would have debited that here for a hundred and eighteen thousand dollars this is with the detachable warrant here and we're going to call that the bond discount so that okay we calculated that above here the bond par value was four million dollars here the bond allocated at three million eight hundred eighty two thousand so the difference here gave us that discount here of hundred eighteen thousand because the allocation was less than the bonds par value or the face value here so discounted at uh, detachable warrant here hundred eighteen thousand dollars debit that for our bonds payable hundred eighteen thousand dollars but now we have to allocate with this detachable warrant here we remember we uh, allocated, and we could go up, up here and look at it again, but we allocated uh, the warrant here at a $158,000 based on our receipts. So that's what we allocated here with the detachable warrant. So that goes against the paid in capital here for the stock warrant. We would credit that here as an equity account here in our balance sheet for $158,000. So that's the warrants. Uh, detached or value here based on that allocation of the receipts when we sold those bonds here. Okay, now you can see here that we've got, um, well, we looking at just our debits and credits here. Cash account, $4,040,000 here. Uh, debit amount here and then our, we have another debit here to the bond discount based on our allocation here of 118,000 so adding those up here are debits with our credit here of 4 million to our bonds payable here then based on the paid in capital account here we also had a credit here of $158,000 so our credits here uh, four million plus one hundred fifty-eight thousand here, balanced with our debits here of one hundred eighteen thousand plus our debit here to cash of four million forty thousand dollars. So that takes care of our detachable warrant. So you can see with the detachable warrant, we allocated a bond discount in this case based on our arithmetic here and what we had done up above. Now let's look at the case here where we've got the non-detachable warrant. So something's got to change here. What stayed the same was the cash amount. We received the same amount of cash here, $4,040,000, and we have the same bond face value that was issued here at $4 million. Now this is the case here for our non-detachable. It's going to be a, really at a premium here because you can see we received more cash here than what the bonds payable or our face value of the bonds here for a million. We, the difference here was $40,000. Cash received four million forty thousand here less what we have in our pet bonds payable here at four million dollars. So we're going to have a balancing entry and they're going to have forty thousand dollars here. So in this case I'm just showing a credit or reduction to as our bond uh, to a reduction here as our bond discount here credit but if you look at it as a premium here you would have in the signs would be reversed here you would have had a debit here. So you would have had a debit here of of or credit here of four million here in your bonds payable and your 
and then the credit here would have gone against the premium account here for forty thousand dollars and that balance is with our cash amount here four million forty thousand dollars now the reason that balance is here because when you're dealing with the non-detachable warrant here the uh, warrant what we assigned here to the uh, value of the warrant would be zero because it's non-detachable here so that's why we've we came up with this uh, a premium here actually when the when the bond was issued here at forty thousand dollars because there was nothing there's nothing there's with the non-detachable warrant here you can't there is no separate recognition for the warrant or any de paid in capital in this case for the warrant it's not given any value in this case it would be zero value here so you can see the difference here uh, with the non-detachable well we had nothing here sitting in our paid in capital to our stock warrants so everything went the difference between our face value here and the cash received the difference gone into our in this case it would have been a bond premium here of forty thousand dollars simply the difference between the cash we received here and what we set up as our bond face value payable amount here the difference went in as in this case a premium okay so you can see the difference here when you're looking at uh, in this case uh, this when the bond was sold at a premium here uh, it was an, with the non it was sold at a premium here based on, uh, based on a non-detachable warrant because there was no value given here to the warrant itself here in any paid in capital equity account here on the balance sheet when it was sold as a non-detachable warrant you can see all the arithmetic here when it was sold here as a detachable warrant the allocation here of the bond was less than what the bonds face or par amount here so that gave us that discount that we had to come up with here and then remember with the detached warrant we had to assign that warrant cost here based on the receipts here and that we calculated to be 158,000 so we have credited that here for 158,000 dollars okay so I think you can see the the arithmetic that goes in here uh, non-detachable warrant no uh, value given to the warrant here no additional paid in capital everything goes into either bond discount or bond premium in this case it was a bond premium okay and then with the uh, detachable warrant then everything was based on that allocation here of our bond here versus the bonds par value face value so we had a discount plus that discount here was balanced you could see we, we did the arithmetic on here with the detachable we assigned that value here to the warrant yeah the warrant itself had a paid in capital account here to the warrant itself what stayed the same here in both cases was the cash we received because we sold the bond with the warrant it could be separated later uh, when it was a uh, a detachable warrant non-detachable you couldn't so but nonetheless it's it, we have the same cash received here with uh, non-detachable versus detachable warrants and then our face value here was the same here detachable versus non-detachable because that hadn't changed okay so that summarizes here the difference between detachable and non-detachable stock warrants